Uh, hello, good afternoon. We are team number two. Uh, our teacher is Samantha Jasmin Guajardo Guerra. We are part of the group 301. And we are going to present about the lecture economic bubbles. Our team is formed by Daniel Alejandro Velasquez Cárdenas, uh, Oscar Adrián González Velasco, and me, Roberto Carrillo Armendariz. Hi, my name is Oscar González, and it's a pleasure for me to introduce you on this section called Before You Read. In this section, we are trying to answer some of the questions that are very related to this topic. Now, people sometimes have collectible items such as paintings or comic books where they hope to make a killing. But maybe you are asking in yourself, what does making a killing mean? Well, it means to earn a lot of money, but not by buying something, by reselling them at a really high price. When the price of this product in a regional or international market goes up due to the demand. Now, the first question that we answered was, can you think of any collectible item where that has been that case? And yes, we remember. We remember when the most expensive baseball car in history was sold. A baseball car that the price, the value around of it was of $3.12 million. Wow, that was very impressive. But it isn't the most impressive thing on it. The most impressive thing on it was that it came for free in a pack of cigarettes in the initial of the 20th century. That is impressive. The next question that we answered was, can you think of any case where the collectors lost their shirts? Uh, now, you may be asking yourself, what those lost their shirt means? It means to lose their investment. And yes, we remember when two or three years ago, Nintendo, the company, started selling a mini version of the Nintendo NES, a gaming console that was sell decades ago. Now, due to the uniqueness of it, make that the initial price of the Nintendo NES Mini, that the price of it was of 799 Mexican pesos. In only one or two weeks, the price of it goes beyond the 40,000 pesos. Wow, that was really impressive. But well, where did those lost shirts come in here? Many people start buying them in a really high price, maybe at 20,000 pesos or 25, thinking that they will sell it in 50 or in, in 40,000 pesos. Mm, they were wrong because passing these two weeks, the third, in the third week, the price of the Nintendo NES Mini was decreasing just until the 799 pesos. They lose their shirts. And the last question that we like to answer is all the money or lost all the money invested in the last question related. Uh, think out of any time when collectors lost their shirts can be explained by the case where Collectors of sneakers that buy in stock price many pairs of collectible shoes. The problem is that for those who buy really all of these sneakers and nobody buy them, they lose a minimum of twelve of ten thousand pesos. Really, really sorry for those. Are there any investments that are sure things? Well. We decided or we came to the conclusion that yes, there are some things that are worth saving, such as jewelry, because these precious rocks rarely change their value, such as the gold or some diamonds. So I guess it's worth saving for later on. Now, here are the, the first three popular sayings that could be related to buying and selling. The first one is, 
don't count your chickens before they hatch. And we arrived to the conclusion that this saying means to not take something as sure until it really happens. And we think this advice is true because you may be disappointed where your product isn't as good as you expected. The second one is a fool and his money are soon parted. And we think it means that it is easy to get money from foolish people since they don't know how to manage or how to maintain their acquired wealth. And even though it is real, this, this is a bad advice for us because taking advantage of fool people is something we shouldn't do. We should help them to, to learn how to maintain their, their wealth. The third one is don't look a gifted horse in the mouth. And we conclude that this means that not to look at the bad things of something that was gifted to you. It is also a great advice since it is, it is a gift. You should not be looking for flaws. Let's go to the next popular saying. Now, here are the last three popular sayings that are related to buying and selling. First, the early bird gets the worm. Okay, so we think that this saying has several meanings, but the two most important ones that we acknowledged were that the first people that get into auctions or sell auctions are the ones that get the better stuff and at less prices. But we have another meaning that is that the people that are more active than the other ones are the, the ones that have the, the best mentality are the ones that get the goals uh, accomplished in their lives. Next, we have nothing ventured, nothing gained. Okay, so after thinking about this phrase, we came up with the conclusion that this means that the one that doesn't take risks are the ones that will, will never gain nothing, while the ones that risk everything for a goal, a certain goal, are the ones that will gain everything. And last but not least, we have don't throw good money after bad, which means that spending money in useless things or things that you don't actually need, it's just wasting money and throwing it away. To start with the vocabulary, we have asset which means something with monetary value that a person or organization controls, such as buildings, machinery, stocks, cash, or inventory. And the example that we gave was, I heard that the businessman that just passed by had an asset value in huge cash numbers. That's how he's got all those cars and shiny watches. Next, we have momentum. It is said that an object has momentum if its current speed will carry it further even if no more force is applied. Prices and popular ideas are also said to have momentum. And the example that we gave that is related to selling and buying is fidget spinners had an enormous momentum. That's why everyone wanted to have one. But nowadays, there are people that do not even remember them. This is true, this is true and it is an example that we actually lived a couple years ago. Now, the last word of the vocabulary, a speculator. A speculator is someone who buys and sells things at increased risk in hopes of making a greater profit. The example we used was, my uncle bought a painting that has 30% chances of growing its value. He's expecting to win money. He is such a speculator. Even though this is at the lower scale, people pay a lot, a lot amount of money in bigger things, and they are called speculators since they are hoping to the thing they buy increase their value. Hi, remember me? I'm Oscar, and in this section we'll see what is this article. Well, this article is classified by us as an online article. Online article's purpose is to provide material for academic research and study through technological channel, making it more available for students. 
or for anyone who likes these topics. Now, let's pass to the next stage. Well, in this section, I will explain you the summary of this lecture, Economic Bubbles. And for this, we need to understand what those an economic bubble is. An economic bubble occurs when uh, speculations in commodities, securities, or real estate, or even collectibles, drives up well beyond the item's intrinsic value. Here are a lot of risks in inversion in these situations due to a lack of knowledge that many people that invest on these things have. The lack of knowledge on these specific situations make that the exponential growth in the economic market of these prices grows exponentially, by the way. Some of the new and full investors doesn't know is that the price of the product will fall sharply once everyone realizes that the price is far beyond to the initial one. For example, let's imagine that we have this cup and the initial price of it is of 70 pesos, Mexican pesos. But imagine that I'm a really famous guy and I'm wearing them and someone take a photo of me. Exponentially, the cost of these ha caps hats can grow exponentially to of someone's famous on it. And maybe if it started on 70 pesos, then the price of this hat, of this specific hat, and the other versions of it will grow to 5,000 pesos. In some point, everyone is going to realize that the price that someone will pay for this is really, really out of context because maybe you can have a blue one of the same with the same design, but it will cost 70 pesos. So why does it matter that someone just wear it and the price grows on increasing? Everyone will know, will realize that the price that they will pay or someone's paying is really, really out of the context and is far beyond to the initial one. The majority of investors know as well that a rising price will encourage many people to continue purchasing of a commodity or, or and a greater willingness of current owners to sell. With more people buying a product due to the popularity of it, the companies that produce this, uh, these products will sell more. And for those that already have these products will sell even to with a higher price. In, the, in this market of exponential growth of products due to the popularity of it, and it's super, super risky because as I just said, the, the price of this can fall in every second, in every moment, and no one will know until the day the day after <laughs> in this market the most you can get advantage of for those investors that doesn't know how to speculate it and that believe only in the speculations of other known investors these speculations may not be true they may be only speculations for you to buy making that the company of the product continue selling as i just said maybe this is a marketing campaign for the for the company to start selling more and everyone will start knowing that these price are far beyond to what it was supposed to cost. Another part of the summary of this lecture, economic bubbles, is that when the price of the product decreases to the initial price, all those that invest on this product need urgently to sell before 
they lose that much of money. Maybe if someone for with the same example buy this product and uh, maybe the double of it, if it was costing 70 Mexican pesos and someone buy it at 140, thinking that someone else will buy it again in 5,000, maybe when the product price decrease again to the initial one, not only the one that invests will lose his money, he will lose the extra money because he buy it at the double price. So the decrease of an economic price in someone's product is very, very risky for investors in this type of situations. Yet for those that bought it to in the initial price need to sell it before the price returns to the same one in which they bought it. Although many investors will sell the product in a really high price, even more higher than the one they paid due to one reason, some economics offer the greater full theory. Buyers justify the high price they pay by assuring themselves that they will find a greater fool who will pay even more. Many customers doesn't know how to buy. Some of them have debts to pay. And continue investing or buying without economic knowledge, but they are also real estate bubbles, not only high risk investments. For example, let's imagine that even though the one that bought this hut at 140 Mexican pesos, will lose his money, the investment, when the initial price of it just returned. Imagine that he returned at the 1 p.m. of the day, and maybe he will look for someone that bought this, that will buy this hat at 500 pesos. The theory that economics says is that there are always going to be a greater fool. If you were a fool by buying something at a high price, thinking that the price of it will increase even more, there is a greater fool than you that will buy it even in a higher price, even though the price of these things aren't that much expensive. But not everything in the investment world is risky at all. Many investors like to invest on products or companies, like their stocks, to buy them, where they can know more precisely what will happen with them due to the re regional or inter international context. Investment, investors like to buy stocks of different strong companies in which their value projections can increase through time. But just as with the risk investments, most investors fundament their actions on external information. By themselves, they can't know how exactly what will happen and how it and follow, they follow other companies or investors' actions. For example, if you, as an investor, see that many people are selling their stocks, the stocks of one company in which you have your money on, maybe it's due to an imminent decrease in the stock market, the value of this stock. And you must sell your stocks as well in case that the projection is true, making you lose money in case it was true. When cases like this one happens, eventually the price will collapse. And when this happens to many companies simultaneously, it is called a stock market crash and all due to panic investors. But yeah, this may be a very, very rare example, but it isn't. Actually, it happens a lot. For you to not waste your money, to not lose them, to not lose your investments in some companies in which you have your money, you need to be very careful on what are happening with them in the global context or in the regional context is an imminent decrease will cost you a lot, a lot of money. Maybe it can put you in a debt 
Well, but that will only happen in case you have a lot of money and you only have your money in only one company. But that is really rare. And I and my group doesn't recommend you to do that. But yes, that was the summary of the lecture, Economic Bubbles. See you. And now we are going with the reading skill of the Economic Bubbles lecture. The reading skill was defining trends. And a trend is an increase or decrease in a behavior over a period of time. In this context, it means anything or assets that can gain or lose popularity or value. An example of how to use a trend to understand it better is when a song becomes excessively popular, other artists look for a collaboration. So now they can become a trend for participating in that famous song. And more about our daily life context, when a person you follow on Instagram or uploads an Insta story with an important news that has to be acknowledged, then you upload it hoping, hoping it becomes a trend. So, with this, we finish our presentation of economic bubbles. Thank you for your attention and hope you have a great day.